I do want to wrap up by uh, giving you a chance to pitch some of your products. But in, in getting into that, I want to kind of, um, yeah, talk about kind of how that's all evolved, you know, the, uh, the ultra franchise, as you call it. <laughs> and, uh, and also just kind of, um, you know, given sort of uh, what you do and your connection to wilderness and the environment and spending mm -hmm. times outdoors and your minimalist existence, Kind of if if you've personally um, been conflicted with um, you know creating products that are put out into the mm -hmm. world and um, you know joining with big corporate organizations like Specialized and 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 mm -hmm. whatever else kind mm -hmm. of um, is there a conflict there for you in terms of um, uh, yeah creating 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 products um, yeah so yeah I do have a number of my my income is is piecemealed throughout. 10 different, maybe 15 products. Mm -hmm. I, won't, I, won't, I won't go into all of it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I think we can run through some of them. The 666 six, six handlebar, yeah, the, the Fabio's chest bags, yeah, yeah. Um, I, your new yeah. forthcoming tire line. My condo development <laughs> <laughs> side project. Yeah, and yeah. I don't at all want to, <laughs> I don't at all want to like uh, bash your products in any ways no. because I personally um, just like, Salivate over them mm, myself. Mm. Like, high-end uh, products, yeah. luxury. Yeah. <laughs> this is luxury. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, kind of. Yeah, how did that? Um, how did that all kind of come to wow. come to fruition? Um, I've I've taken a uh, um, I've taken like a personal stance on if if I think it should exist, then I'm just going to make it, and uh, um, that's been pretty. It's been a pretty. I guess I've trusted my gut thus far, and it's been pretty. It's treated me pretty well. Some projects are a little bit more fulfilling, both monetarily and um, and uh, mentally, than others. But you know, this one, like the, uh, I should. I'll start with the bag. The Fabio's chest is a like a, a bike packing bag that is based off of like a traditional Caradice style, like traditional tu uh, touring saddle bag. But it's it's like triple extra large. Has a roll top and a, and a, a flap over the. I won't. You look it up if you like to. Uh, the Fabio's chest. <laughs> the chest is the best. <laughs> this one is, that's my primary source of income. I make it through Swift Industries. You could use it as like a, uh, what's cool about it is you don't take it off your bike after you're done touring with it or whatever. You could still use it to get groceries or take your stuff with it. It's handsome enough that it doesn't look like a, like you just strapped a trash bag to the front of your bike like a lot of the bike packing specific bags do. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could actually get into it like, you know, through the top without having to unpack all your stuff you don't have to s stuff your stuff into your stuff to get rolling in the morning which is a pain in the ass is you know you spend mm -hmm. like half hour just packing up your sleeping yeah. bag <laughs> so, your stuff is worth. That, that's yeah. it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah there's that there's the handlebars I, I uh, you know if you uh, this will this will be tantalizing for um, our road bicycle viewers <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. um, I'll uh, you know the road bike handlebars, as we, I was touching on with you earlier, they're 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 narrow because you have to. They're designed for professional bicycle racing, where you're vying for position in a finishing sprint. And if you were to use my handlebars, are they first off, I'm sure they wouldn't even. Maybe in Cat yeah. Five, It'd be actually a safety measure in Cat Five to keep everyone away from you. Uh, um, but you know, you, you would take out everybody in a sprint. Um, yeah. So, so you know, the, the the handlebars have been kept narrow to negotiate through a peloton at the end of a race, or to keep yourself really aerodynamic on like a time trial or something like that. Uh, you think about mountain bike handlebars were really, really narrow in the 90s. And you can't buy one that's narrower than right. 700, 750 millimeters. Now they make them. I have one on my mountain bikes, 820 millimeters wide. Yeah. Like that's like you know you think about that. Like mountain bikes have had, have been given a lot in a lot of ways. Like most of the innovation always comes from mountain bikes because the, there aren't they aren't there aren't restrictions on them like you have from the UCI and road professional road bike racing and things like that. And so um, I was like, well, why are why are road bike handlebars so damn narrow? Like this is so uncomfortable and so inefficient. As far as you know, like wider is better. More, you know, as your tires get wider, you have more leverage to control them. Your chest is opening up. You're able to breathe more. You put more weight. More weight is transferred to your pectorals rather than your deltoids. So it's a much bigger muscle group and used to holding your body weight up like that. And um, and you could fit a huge bag in the front without you know hitting the sides of your handlebars. So it was a that was like a three-year-long uh, uh, design process because, it, like, convincing the factories that you can make a wide road handlebar was a, just like 
you know, I, I, I had to have some, um, some like uh, hair plugs put in after that, just <laughs> going through. That, so all of the revenue from the handlebars is going right to my hair plugs. I know, right? Yeah, a worthy cause. So yeah, yeah handlebars, what else? I got like photo specific fanny packs um, uh, for, to get that gram real quick when you're, uh, you know, when you're trying to get that gram. Yeah. Uh, what else do I have? Well, I mean, I think <laughs> just to get it like the larger. Oh yeah, I have my bicycle, my bicycle company. Oh yeah, your bicycle company, the I, Romancer. The Romancer yeah. with cross bikes, and then I have my own expedition bike, which is under my brand, Rose Brand. It's just an emoji. You can't even search for it on the internet. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, mm -hmm. kind of gets at um, mm -hmm. the, the larger point of mm -hmm. like, these aren't products that you've necessarily created to, um, you know, uh, create any sort of profit, but it's n more like, mm -hmm. I remember doing uh, that trip with you years ago where mm -hmm. that was, you had created a frame bag, which was one of, you had mm -hmm. made it, it was mm -hmm. kind of your first frame bag, mm -hmm. and that's when you were, you know, first experimenting with, um, instead of carrying canteens, mm -hmm. using water bottle bladders and putting them yeah. in the frame bag. So these are things that, like, in your experiences, in your travels, that mm -hmm. you've come to realize you need. Yeah. You create it yourself, or mm -hmm. you convince someone else to create it for yeah. you, yeah. and then you kind of put it out there and mm -hmm. see if anybody else would like this product, and it seems like they Yeah, they precisely. Have. Yeah, it's, one, it's wonderful. Like, we have, like, within... Within the, our our bicycling community uh, uh, on Inst via Instagram, which is so strange, this little <laughs> app, this app uh, you, know, you would think of it as like um, being like the the antithesis of community, right? Yeah. You know, or, but it, or, of authentic community. But it's yeah. a it's a digital community, and I've met so many like incredible people who are now like lifelong friends through that app. Yeah. And uh, um, and we have our own community, and we have we like look out for one another if somebody gets hurt. Like we all kind of rally together and do like a GoFundMe or something. Like, mm -hmm. Crust Matt broke his ankle and needed twenty thousand dollars for surgery. We paid for it. Wow. You know, it, we got we got funded for that in less than a day. Yeah. And uh, um, and and uh, like somebody somebody's house, uh, Clint Reynolds' father's house burnt down, and that was another thing. We raised enough money to like get them a new down payment on their on like a new house, like like in within like a week or something like. Yeah. That. It's just crazy stuff where you think about the power of like if used properly, like these technologies, which is all. What you know? What I think is so cool about balancing the, the old and the new, like using these technologies and and bypassing like bypassing corporations and being able to do everything like DIY, like on your own, has made like a uh, you know like an anarchistic society like within our uh, within our little like bike touring, uh, um, which is you know it's large. I mean, it, I, if I have a hundred thousand followers on Mach One or whatever, like all those people like get it in a way like they're into this sort of thing, and if and if somebody and I, I absolutely consider them part of the community and everything, yeah. you know. And so I'm able to sell directly to these people, and they're and of course they're they want to do, they want to kind of even if they only get to do it like a week out of the year because they have full time jobs and kids and stuff like yeah. that. They want to make sure that that experience is something that they're going to remember and like look forward to next year when they get to do it again. So I feel like it almost is my job because I get to I'm so. You know, I'm lucky enough to get to do this full time. Mm -hmm. That if you know, if I feel like a product is warranted and like needs to be developed, then I'm going to spend all of the, the time that I have on my bike, like you know, testing R and D and and just just imagining up concepts and how it could be made or where it could be made. And I want to make sure that I can do that to my the best of my ability and offer these products to other people, just so that they can have their one week, maybe a month. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then. Little Easter egg, you did mention you have a third um, Instagram account. <laughs> the secretest of the most secrets. Yeah, Are you able to reveal that, or is that something that our audience will have to um, search for on their own? Probably. You know, it, it, there are no bicycles on that one, and you could search for it on your own. Okay. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of these, a lot of our viewers are just experiencing my first account. Right <laughs> yeah. So familiarize yourself yeah, with yeah. Ultra Romance. Go to Ultra Romance Mach Two, uh -huh. and then and when you're ready, yeah. yeah, and then find me on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> so secret, it no longer exists. Well, Ronnie Romance, it has yeah. been an absolute pleasure. Luxury cyclotourist. Uh, I yeah the. 
I'm number one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it really is a beautiful uh, <laughs> film that you have coming out. Thank We're you. gonna yeah. keep everyone up to date with the release mm -hmm. date as it becomes available. Yeah, yeah, we'll be doing some parties around Austin and uh, California. We have a weed sponsorship, old old pal, that's gonna be uh, supplying pre-roll joints to all the California um, Excellent. We're straight um, edge, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that doesn't fly in Texas. <laughs> Does not fly in Texas. <laughs> that's 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 uh, no. They're herbal. It's herbal. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Thanks again for uh, joining us. Uh -huh. and, yeah, we'll look forward to uh, the release of your film, California Gold, mm -hmm. and best of luck with your future endeavors. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>